of the most important things in this creation process is that you are going to be working in something you feel passionate about. And this is something I repeat to all of my students during the, their mentorships or their free classes, that you should build something or create something that you are in love with or passionate about. Remember that you might be working, you know, with 3D programming, technical art, anything you want, but at the end you are already producing art and art doesn't come from anywhere else than your heart. So if you work in something you are passionate about, you're going to be able to put way more energy just because you love what you're doing and you're really interested in it. Now stick with me till the end of the video because I have a surprise for you that is going to be really valuable and you're going to be learning a lot from that. Hey guys, today we're going to look into how we can build, yes, an efficient portfolio for the right studio. Now we're going to be talking about this because we realize that many people struggle a lot when they will have to choose which projects or artworks to take on and which ones to upload and which ones not to. So today I bring you a new method, yes, to organize your way into a new portfolio, into something I usually offer to my mentors, which is a portfolio roadmap. Yeah. Now this portfolio roadmap is composed by six core projects or let's say core uh, bullet points that we're going to be looking into each of them step by step. Now stick with me till the end of the video because I have a surprise for you that is going to be really valuable and you're going to be learning a lot from that. And most probably it's going to be super useful for you as well. And the first one, of course, is going to be the studio selection. Now, there's a reason why I put this one from like, it's really obvious. Yes, you should choose a studio, but there's a reason why I'm saying this. So like I can statement and the reason for this is because many people, when they say, yeah, I want to work for this studio in particular, they actually don't work towards that studio, but they work towards different studio and they apply for different studios because they want more like the job than working for that studio. So the first would be to only pick one studio. Now, if you want to make a journey, it's easier to make the journey. Yes, and it's going to be faster to you for you to finish it if you know where you're going and your final destination is just one. Now, if you have several studios you want to join and you need to build a portfolio for all of them, that's going to be a little, a little bit hard and the studios might not like that you want to work not only for them, but for other studios as well. And they might take it a little bit personal. So the first thing would be to choose one. And before making the decision, it would be like great if you could actually analyze your options before moving forward. Why? When you work on a studio, yes, mostly on AAA studios or even outsourcing studios, what is going to happen is that once you get into a project, you most probably be, will be working for about two to three years minimum on this project. So if you're gonna get two to three years of work on only one single project, you better like what you're gonna be doing. So you need to analyze or research, better say, what's the artwork they are they, they have, yeah? What's their art, art style? And which techniques and softwares do they use? And what do they ask to the role you wanna join at? Yeah, so this takes us to our second and first step, which I'm going to be explaining together, which is artwork research. Yes, and this is one of the most important parts of all this portfolio roadmap creation. And that is because if you don't know, yes, what the studios will need from you, you're not going to be able to build a portfolio that is going to call for their attention. Now, you can make things really pretty and nice and that's going to catch their eye, but there's not going to catch their attention and interest unless you have something of value for them. And in this case, we're going to split it in two parts, the studio research and the artist research. So when we talk about the studio research, we want to, we want to research all their games and projects they have been developing so far. The newer the projects, the better for you because you know what they are doing right now. But you want to go for the styles, the themes of their projects, how they work, their tools, everything. You want to look at everything. Like, let's say, for example, if you are working, if you want to work for a studio like horror game studio, the themes and the mood of their environments are going to be totally different to the ones, for example, of a game from EA. So that's pretty much the core of it. Now, when we go to the artist part of research, what we're going to do is we're going to look for the artists that they are working on the role you want to have. Yes. And that they are also working on that specific studio you have chosen before. Now, when you go to their portfolios, you want to see what artworks did they have before getting hired and what artworks did they create while being hired. Yes. And this is going to be one of the most core parts of this portfolio road creation. 
and it's going to be mainly because of the following every studio works yes in different ways now if they want to hire you yes and let's say you are a junior you're going to be more like valuable for them if you already know some things or some procedures they have on their workflow let's say we have two artists one of them knows how to make great materials but he doesn't know how to make dream sheet the other one knows how to make materials, he doesn't have the same amount of quality in his artwork but knows exactly how to make friendships, how to apply them and how to make them fit with the environment. That artist, I can assure you, is going to be more valuable for the studio and is most probably going to get hired. And that's because there is, let's say, a charge where it's not about the money, it's about how much it's going to cost them in time to train the artist. So the faster you are to train, the less they have to teach you, the more valuable you're going to be for them as well. Now, the fourth step of this portfolio roadmap creation is what they usually talk with my students during their onboarding about which will be the course they want to have in their artworks. And that's going to depend on your skills and what you like or would like to learn. Now, these course are basically three of them. So the first one is going to be your learning skills. Which skills do you have and which ones do you want to learn? Now, this is really important because I believe that when you're trying to get into a job, yes, you really need to show that you know something that you are willing to learn. So each project you do, it's good that you have kind of like a learning path where in each project you learn something new. It doesn't matter if it's something really small or really big as a huge project, but you need to show that you are learning something new that you haven't done before. If you always keep doing the same, then it's not going to work for you or for the people who's hiring you because you're not showing any kind of development in yourself. Now, the second core would be the difficulty. So if it's something that you have done previously, let's say a skill you already done, then in that case, uh, you can level up the difficulty a little bit. But if it is the same the first time, then I would suggest you to start really low on the difficulty of your project. For example, in my case, I recently started learning Houdini. So in my first project, I just did a procedural bridge generator. Yes, from there I went to building a scene and now I'm building a full city with a course, of course, where I'm going to be creating a procedural, procedural outline. That's how I scale the difficulty in my projects. Now, the last one of this course, and most probably one of the highest for your priority, should be the quality. Yeah, You need to be consistent and prioritize your quality over all your projects. What does this mean? This means that you're going to have to make a first project where you, you reach certain quality and that quality is so good that you can go lower than that. This is a recommendation I got from one of my mentors, Enrico, where he told me once I achieved a really good material, I shouldn't go lower than that. And if I can repeat the same process over and over, yes, I'm going to be able to get a job and impress someone. So this is something really important because you're showing consistency and dedication and that you really want to get to that level of detail or quality in your artwork and it's one of the most important things for you to have as an artist which is consistency as well i know that i've said a lot of things so far but one of the most important things in this creation process is that you are going to be working in something you feel passionate about and this is something i repeat to all of my students during the, their mentorships or their free classes that you should build something or create something that you are in love with or passionate about remember that you might be working you know with 3d programming technical art anything you want but at the end you're already producing art and art doesn't come from anywhere else than your heart so if you work in something you are passionate about you're gonna be able to put way more energy just because you love what you're doing and you're really interested in it so i think that this is one of the most important steps when building in your portfolio road you need you need to choose an artwork that you're gonna be passionate about yeah you does it doesn't need to i mean this is not only about getting the job but also learning to enjoy the process if you enjoy the process you're gonna put so much time in it that by the end you're gonna be 10 times better than before and that's one of the most important things of this portfolio roadmap is that you get to choose to work in what you love rather than what you have to. For that, what I usually do, I split their artwork in two parts. A 60% should be all directed to passion, meaning choosing an, an artwork where you are really passionate about, and the other 40% to everything I have saved so far, meaning having the right skills, learning something, uh, the quality of your artwork, everything. But you need to be sure that what you're choosing is something you are gonna love to make. 
and you, you're gonna love it so much you're gonna make it the best of it you can so the last step is to organize everything we have gotten into and create your artworks project based in the difficulty let me show you how to do it so we're gonna start from the bottom of this pyramid or this column yes and we're gonna start with a small project yeah we're gonna start with something small because we are just learning this let's say you are making material in substance designers so your first project most probably is gonna be a tile material I mean kind of a floor with tiles and a little bit of cement it's something really simple which can have a lot of detail and be super interesting and it's not gonna have so much load of technical knowledge but it's you but in order to make it really good you will have to learn a lot about what it would be art direction and how to make things really good and of course render so we're going to do that two times we're going to choose two small projects yes each one is going to have a tiny adjustment in difficulty maybe first one is going to be really easy second one is going to be a little bit harder and then we're going to get to medium projects meaning when that the load of what we're going to be building it's going to be way higher yes or let's say uh, double the time and you need to set a date for everything yeah so you need to be sure that when you choose a small project or a medium project or a big project as you see in the screen you're gonna choose also a selected amount of time that you're gonna dedicate to this. Now, this selected amount of time is for you to have a visual representation of how much time it's gonna take you. When you are working on this project, it doesn't mean that you need to finish right when you said it was going to finish. Now, if you ask me, I rather extend that time to get a better quality and better learning process than just cutting the artwork there and uploading something that is not gonna be useful for you. So if you wanna build something, build something that's gonna be valuable and useful for you at the same time. So this was the last step on how to build your portfolio roadmap and I want to share with you something a little more special personal which is basically the reason why I'm doing this and there's four core reasons to why I'm doing this and the main one to be starting with is because I didn't have this when I started learning five years ago when I started learning uh, material art and substance designer it was actually quite new for many studios to work as a specific role of material art and there were many, not many job opportunities at that moment and as well there was not much learning content in fact my first material i made it from a, a youtube video and after that a course i bought on domestica from another artist who's actually working on activision right now but with time coming what it really pushed me forward was different communities and artists who were actually professionals like for example jeremy from dynasty and Enrico Tamihab, who is right now, right now is working on Siri Project Red, who actually support me and give me feedback on my artwork all around my career. And till today, they are still supporting me and they're really amazing artists. So I want to do all of this, like all this content creation process, all this sharing, because I want to increase the visibility of the role of a material artist and build a, like a better and easier path for students as well. Now I say know that it's just not easy to go throughout this path and not many people are really getting what they want from universities and they're struggling a lot on getting a job and getting the quality they need in order to get a job. I came up with three solutions, yes, which will be an open Discord community that you can really join just by clicking the link in the description. Yeah, there's a link you're gonna get there. We are an open and free Discord community where we want to help others. We're gonna learn about material art. We're gonna learn about substance designer and how to become the best version of ourselves as a professional. Now, alongside with this, we have a lot of options for free educational content. YouTube is not the only place. Yes, we have free educational content on LinkedIn, as graphic design. We have a lot of events in the, in the Discord. We have free uh, Discord classes where you're gonna see me show you the basics of substance designer and how to build materials. And finally, of course, the guiding programs, which is the paid version where you will be able to work hand by hand with me and learn everything I've, I've seen in the last five years of working as a professional material artist in the gaming industry. So if you don't believe me, I really want to help you. I just uploaded a full website on Notion with the portfolio roadmap for the Ubisoft Studio. Now, this is something I have already done for many of my students and I really want to share with you so you can actually see how to build your own portfolio roadmap for any other studios and which project you should take in consideration. Now, remember all the steps we have been through, yeah? Choose wisely your artworks and choose the skills you really want to learn. 
I might be doing another video in this where you will be watching how I built the portfolio roadmap step by step and project by project. Now, thanks for watching. I hope you really enjoyed the video and that you learned a lot of things in this one. And if you are really serious about becoming a material artist, then you should ch join our Discord community. You will find the link in the description and a lot of support from our community members. I'll see you in next chapter.